Welcome guys in this WooCommerce tutorial series. My name is Rana and in this video I'll show you how you can set up WooCommerce plugin for your e-commerce website. In this video we will look at specifically basic setting of WooCommerce plugin for your e-commerce website. So without wasting more time let's get started. Okay so in the dashboard of your WordPress make sure you have installed WooCommerce plugin. I assume you already have it. If you do not have this plugin, you can install it by going to plugins, add new, and here you can search for WooCommerce. You can install and activate this plugin. Once you have it, go to the dashboard and let's hover your mouse over WooCommerce and then click on settings. So under the WooCommerce settings, you will see several tabs. In this video, we'll look at few of them. We will cover some of these tabs separately in a different video okay but in this video we will look at only basic settings of woocommerce first we have the general tab in this tab we have to type in our store address so let's quickly type in the store address select your country i'm from india so i'm going to type india punjab which is my state your postcode your city your address line one and two should be written here Below that we have general option. First we have selling location, we have shipping location and we have default customer location. Here you have to select the selling location, sell to all countries or you can select sell to all countries except for this country or that country. You can choose from there okay or you can sell to specific country only. If you go with specific country you can type your country where you want to sell your products I'm going to type India or you can add more countries where you want to sell your products. Right now I'm going to sell only in India. So I'm happy with this. Let's scroll down. Next we have shipping location. Here you can select ship to specific country only. If you go with sell to specific country you can select this option and you can type your country here. Okay. Default customer location shop base address should be fine okay next we have unable taxes you can enable this option if you want by enabling this option your customer or buyer can calculate the tax rate on the checkout page in different video you will find out what i mean by that but for now you can enable this option if you want next we have coupon code you can enable coupons code for your customer later in this video i'll show you how you can create a coupons code this is very useful option. Make sure you use this option for every e-commerce website. If any case you don't like coupons code on your website, you can disable this option. But this is very useful option for my opinion. So I'm going to leave it checked. Okay. Next we have calculate coupon discount sequentially. When apply multiple coupon, apply the first coupon for full price and second coupon to the discount price and so on. That means if you enable this option, your customer can apply multiple coupons on single order right so i don't really like it so i'm gonna leave it unchecked next below we have currency option currency we have united states dollar by default you can type your currency over here i'm selling my products in india so i'm gonna type indian rupees because i deal with indian rupees so i'll go with indian rupee okay Next we have currency position left which is fine for Indian rupees okay. Next we have thousand separator, decimal separator, number of decimals. Everything is fine by default. Let's go ahead click on save changes. We are done with general tab. Let's go ahead look at the products tab. So under the product tab we have three options. We have general, inventory and downloadable products. Under the general option we have shop pages shop page should be store or your shop page if you do not have shop page here you can create one by going to pages add new and create your own shop page below that we have add to cart behavior by checking this option redirect to cart page after successful addition that means if anyone add any single product in their cart page they will redirect to the cart page automatically which is not right that means you are not allowing your visitor or your customer to add multiple items into their cart page. So I don't really like it so I'm gonna leave it unchecked. Enable Ajax add to cart button or archives you can 
unable or disable this option it's all up to you next we have placeholder image if you hover your mouse over this question mark you will see what that mean is product with no image will use this placeholder image okay if you hover your mouse over here you can remind yourself by reading this note this is attachment id or image url used for placeholder images in the product catalog product with no image will use this the product which does not have any images will use this placeholder images okay you can type any number over here to show your placeholder images on the product page that does not have any image okay below that we have measurement weight unit dimension unit it depends on your product type if you are selling heavy product you can go with kilograms or you can go with grams or you can go with lbs oz it's all up to you if i'm selling uh, clothes on my e-commerce website so i would go with grams and dimension unit would be centimeter which which is fine and below that we have reviews unable reviews you can enable reviews on the product page which is very useful option by doing so you can gain more trust of your customer on your website so very useful option make sure you enable reviews on the product page right if you check this option that means only verified owners can review on your website i don't really like it so i think this is not a very good idea to check this option so i'm gonna leave it as it is by default everything is good here once you do that don't forget to click on save changes next we have inventory under the inventory we have manage stock make sure you check this option hold stock minutes you can type any number over here if you want to hold stock for 16 minutes you can type in over here okay you can change this number whatever number you want that's all up to you notification enable low stock notification enable out of stock notification you can check both of these options and below that we have notification receipt here you can type your original email id where you would like to receive these two type of notifications okay low stock threshold here you can type any number you want by default is two you can type something like five or maybe ten if you count this number low stock threshold you can go with this number out of stock threshold which is zero absolutely fine when product unit reach at this number you will get notify at this email okay or when product goes out of stock you will receive notification at the same email id okay below that we have stock display format you can choose any type of format for your product page by default it is always show quantity remains in stock like for example 12 in stock for me this is absolutely fine so i would go with this once i happy with my changes I'm gonna click on save changes next we have downloadable products let's go ahead open that under this option we have file download method we have different types of file download method over here I recommend you to go with first option which is by default force downloads below that we have access restrictions if you check this option download require login that means your customer has to log in in order to download their products guest checkout or guest purchase does not apply on this settings okay they have to have login in order to download their items rest of the things are good by default you don't have to change anything let's go ahead click on save changes next we have text we will look at text tab shipping tab payment tab and few other tabs in a separate video in this video we will look at only basic setting for our woocommerce plugin if you go to accounts and privacy here you can see we have guest checkout you can allow your customer to place order without an account or you can allow your customer to log in into existing account during checkout both options are good account creation you can allow your customer to create an account during checkout if you want to do it you can check this option or we have another option allow customer to create an account on my account page which is not really idle so i don't really like it so I'm gonna leave it unchecked when creating an account automatically generate an account username for customer based on their name and surname or email this is not really good idea to check this option let your customer to create their username and their password according to their ideas okay do not force them to create an account automatically anyways next we have when creating an account automatically generate an account password 
uncheck this option which is not really good okay and next we have account erasure request if you check this option your customer can request you to remove their personal information from their order okay if you check the below option your customer can request you to remove access to download on their product page personal data removal you can allow personal data to remove in bulk from order it's all up to you if you want to do this in any situation you can check these option anytime just keep in mind these options or these functions are already available for you guys for WooCommerce plugin you don't have to download separate plugin for these type of functionalities next we have privacy policy registration privacy policy here you can type your own privacy policy below that we have checkout privacy policy you can type in your own privacy policy if you have created your own privacy policy just go ahead type in over here and next we have personal data retention here you can retain inactive account retain pending orders retain failed orders retain cancelled orders retain completed orders that means if you type over here like one here you can choose month week days years if you go with months one month that means the account that has been created and does not logged in for one month they will be deleted automatically after a month okay and if you type over here something like one day the pending order which is still pending you can see pending orders are unpaid and may have been abandoned by the customer they will be trashed after specific duration we type that specific duration over here let's say one day the pending order will be on the trash page okay retain failed order you can type retain failed order over here one day that would be fine you can hover your mouse over here and you can read the note over here failed order are unpaid and may have been abandoned by the customer they will be trashed after the specific duration you can type the duration over here you can change day week month year for these two options you should go with days right retain cancel order you can type something like two or maybe one that would be fine retain completed order which is self-explanatory guys you can type whatever number you want let's go with one month that would be fine or you can go with two months it's all up to you once you make your changes on this page don't forget to click on save changes but in this page i like this option to check allow customer to create an account on during checkout this is very useful option let's go ahead click on save changes once again let's go to the emails tab so guys here make sure first three emails should be your the admin of the e-commerce website if you want to change this email let's go ahead and click on manage for new order you can type your recipient email over here so i'm going to type my email over here and then click on save changes let's go back by clicking over here you can see i've just changed this email in the same way you can change these two emails by clicking on manage that way you can change your recipient email on your e-commerce website next we have integration we will look at this tab separately in the separate video we have advanced tab you can see we have several different types of options here we have page setup reset api webhooks legacy api whocommerce.com and features so on and so forth in the page setup we have page setup we have cart page make sure you select your cart page if you do not have cart page you can create one by going to pages add new let me show you what i mean by that let's open this up in a new tab when you create a cart page just type your page title something like something like cart underscore two and below that you have to type woocommerce short code you can find that short code on their woocommerce website let me show you what is that short code let's open all pages in a new tab let's open the cart page let's open this one so this is the short code of woocommerce plugin that you can use to create your own cart page you can find different types of short code from their official website i will provide you the link in the description box of this video for different types of short codes let's go ahead close these tabs leave it okay below you should select your checkout page by default is right there if you do not have checkout page you can create one in the same way like i mentioned earlier my account page should be my account page terms and condition page you should select your terms and condition page 
right now i don't have any terms and condition page so i have to create a new one by going to pages and add new i'm gonna type terms and condition and below that i have to type the terms and condition for my e-commerce website all right once you do that let's go ahead click on publish click on publish once again and we are good let's go ahead close this come back to this page if you still not see here and refresh the page and now let's go ahead and select your terms and condition page by typing terms and conditions this would be your terms and condition page and below that we have secure checkout you can check this option only if you have SSL certificate installed on your e-commerce website right now there is no SSL so I cannot check this option let's scroll down checkout endpoint we have pay you can type any note over here by default these notes are absolutely fine so I'm not gonna change anything over here let's keep scrolling down we have account endpoints again you can change any note from here if you want by default all of them are good you don't have to change anything in any case if you feel like you have to change any note you can go ahead type whatever you want right once you make your changes don't forget to click on save changes and we are good with page setup let's look at reset api so here basically you can create api keys for external apps to view and manage your stored data basically you are giving access or grant to third party applications to manage your stored data and view your personal information if you want to do that you can do it from here but in this video i'll not show you how to do it if you want to learn you can watch my separate video that you will find in this very channel so right now we are not going to create any api key let's look at web hooks again we don't look at web hooks let's go ahead look at legacy api we do not enable any legacy api right now or any other features we're not gonna cover here okay all right guys so we are done with the basic settings of woocommerce plugin if you guys want to learn how to create e-commerce website you can go to my channel and here you can watch this video how to create e-commerce website or you can find other different types of e-commerce website like you can create premium drop shipping store or you can create aliexpress premium drop shipping store or you can learn how to install ssl certificate as well anyways you can watch other woocommerce tutorials on my channel i'll provide you a link in the description box of this video or you can watch these two videos right here and that being said goodbye and i'll catch you guys next time